this week for my accountability reading video. Uh, this week I finished Sapiens. Oh, my camera's a little bit off. Sapiens. Uh, this was written by Yuval Noah Harari. First published in uh, 2011 in Hebrew, but then this English version was published in 2015. Um, it took me a long time to get my hands on this. It's always uh, requested the library. It's pretty hard to get a copy of this because it's so popular. Uh, I can see why it's super popular. It's a bestseller um, and all these good things. Um, I did expect this to be m similar to Jared Diamond's book, The Rise and Fall of the Third Chimpanzee. I kind of expected it to be more maybe archaeological, more uh, anthropological, I guess, more historical in that sense, um, more biological maybe. Um, but it wasn't like that at all. It's extremely broad. Um, I definitely did not expect it to be as broad of a historical approach to human beings as it is. Um, I guess the, I, there's so much in this book that it doesn't make sense for me to do like short readings and I'm just going to read some of the end. But um, he breaks up uh, humankind into the cognitive revolution, uh, which... We still don't know what happened. So this, the answer, I'm kind of reading this hoping that there would be some answers to the um, understanding of how uh, Homo sapiens developed cognitively and how the cognitive revolution happened. Um, but that did not get revealed to me in this book, unfortunately. Um, it talks about the agricultural revolution. So our development from uh, hunters and gatherers to agricultural societies so farmers. Um, it talks about the unification of humankind, so that's a lot to do with uh, religion, uh, capitalism, um, and, and coming together as groups uh, rather than small tribes and bands. Uh, and then it talks about the scientific revolution, which is our pursuit of progress, particularly um, focused on uh, European European scientific developments and European approaches to scientific developments. So the way they approach exploration and their understanding that uh, they don't know everything as opposed to previous eras where people believe that they knew everything or God knew everything. Um, so it's quite interesting. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit from the end. So it's really just the, the, the afterword. So it's a page and a half. 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens was still an insignificant animal minding its own business in a corner of Africa. In the following millennia, it transformed itself into the master of the entire planet and the terror of the ecosystem. Today, it stands on the verge of becoming a god, poised to acquire not only eternal youth, but also the divine abilities of creation and destruction. Unfortunately, the sapiens regime on Earth has so far produced little of what we can be proud of. We have mastered our surroundings, increased food production, built cities, established empires, and created far-flung trade networks. But did we decrease the amount of suffering in the world? Time and time again, massive increases in human power did not necessarily improve the well-being of the individual sapiens, and usually caused immense misery to other animals. In the last few decades, we have made some real progress as far as the human condition is concerned, with the reduction of famine, plague and war. Yet the situation of other animals is deteriorating more rapidly than ever before, and the improvement in the lot of humanity is too recent and fragile to be certain of. Moreover, despite the astonishing things that humans are capable of doing, we remain unsure of our goals, and we seem to be as discontented as ever. We have advanced from canoes to galleys to steamships to space shuttles, but nobody knows where we're going. We are more powerful than ever before, but we have very little idea of what to do with that power. Worse still, humans seem to be more irresponsible than ever. Self-made gods 
with the only laws of physics to keep us company, we are accountable to no one. We are consequently wreaking havoc on our fellow animals and on the surrounding ecosystem, seeking little more than our own comfort and amusement, yet never finding satisfaction. Is there anything more dangerous than a dissatisfied and irresponsible gods who don't know what they want? I think that's pointing to his next book, uh, Homo Deus. I haven't read Homo Deus. I have his third book, uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Um, that's the end of this. I think you should read that and check it out. Um, just like a random aside, so if you don't want to hear me talk about my own opinions for a little bit, then switch the video. But um, I've noticed this interesting ongoing theme through a number of my books. So whether it's Martin Seligman's books on an optimistic child or Ikigai or Bushido or any of these non-fiction books that have got to do with human beings and self-development, I'm continuing to see these really interesting nods to uh, Nietzsche's idea of, I guess, Viktor Frankl as well, but this nod to Nietzsche's idea that if there is a why, there is a how in life. So. If we are suffering immensely, if we have a reason for our suffering and the reason and our goal for our lives, then there's anything that we can withstand to continue going, going to continue going through the suffering to get to an end. And I've kind of come up against this little difficult psychological and philosophical situation whereby how do you get outside of nihilism? How do you get past that point of if we if our lives are meaningless and our actions have no meaning in the terms of the whole universe and the decisions we make and the things we do have no meaning because they're so insignificant, then how do we escape outside of nihilism? How do we get past that point where nothing we do means anything and we don't matter and nothing is important? How do we get past that point? And I'm really struggling uh, personally to make an argument to say that anything we can do is meaningful, especially after reading a book like this, where 70,000 years later, human beings are less happy than they were when they're hunter gatherers. It's, it's a really interesting, really difficult psychological question. Um, and yeah, if you have a comment or an idea, let me know. Uh, this video has turned into quite a long one, so I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, sapiens, check it out.